Just want to let you lot know that if you're watching this clip on the Fozcast YouTube channel, the full episode is now available to watch exclusively on Spotify. And it's free. Come on. Premier League clubs are bringing on more goalies. I had an example, a uh, good example, I hope he doesn't mind me mentioning this, but as a young lad, uh, he, he left Oxford in the summer, trying to find something in non-league for him. And it's been a little bit hit and miss, top young keeper. But again, even non-league, they're not wanting to spend money on goalkeepers. Yeah. Don't want to give the salaries. But there's a lot of clubs now looking for effectively training goalkeepers. Yeah. You know, you get to be with the first team, get to be, you know, with the, the 23s and you'll fill in. Because what a lot of these top clubs will do is then the young lads they're investing in, they'll let them go and get the games or get the loans or whatever else. So they need people around to then, you know, supplement these. And so, yeah, he just signed for Man United this week. Joking. So he's now up there training with Man United on a, you know, day-to-day basis. Absolutely loving it. They love him. So there's these roles that have come up out of nowhere. So for these sort of 20, 21-year-old lads that might be struggling to find that right role, you know, it's four or five uh, that I've heard of in the last few weeks where they need these type of keepers to come in and supplement, which again, the benefit for them is going to maximise their they're learning over the next year. So even if he leaves Man United in a year's time, you'd like to think the club that he can then go to. market will be... That's really interesting. And actually, we're starting to lean towards an American model here with NFL training squads, mm. um, aren't we? Yeah. That's... Yeah, well, it, it, yeah, it is that. And so you're finding then the squads at the top, the Premier League Championship, have become that bit bigger. It's become smaller. And again, it's that, I say the one, two, three, because even there we're talking about a four, five, six, seven. You know, you had it at, uh, you see it a lot of these clubs. Man City do it brilliantly uh, for me, like where you've got Edison's very much the outright one. Ortega, obviously two, top two, and he's pushing. And at some point that will change because there's only so long he'll be the two. You know, Scott Carson's just perfect for that number Perfect. three role. And what that does is allow the younger ones, your Kieran Slicker previously, your James Trafford previously, yeah, yeah. Bazunu previously, who, by the way, they've just sold Bazunu and Trafford for however many millions, 30 odd million between them. So that kind of model where you've got a settled one, settled two, settled three, your young ones out getting the loans is the perfect model. So few have still got that right. And actually so few for me have still got the dynamic right between the one and the two because it's so hard to find so, a so good talk number us two. About, talk to us about this one and two then, this dynamic, yeah. because obviously David Raya signing for Arsenal in the summer, everybody's kind of just like, what? I don't get it. Me personally, I don't get it, Rich. I don't get it. I love David Raya as well. I think he's a fantastic goalie. And I want to see him playing in the Premier League. I do. I want to see him playing week in, week out because he has got one of the finest side volleys. <laughs> Honestly, this guy, the most beautiful zing. He's just pinging it all over the shop. It's a, it's, a, it's a thing of beauty, genuinely. And as a goalkeeper, he's absolutely top. So he deserves to be playing in the Premier League. And then he signs for Arsenal, which again, makes me just go, why? Because Aaron Ramsdale... I don't, what's he? He was just named in the Premier League team of the year for last season. Yeah. He's just named in the Premier League team of the year for last yeah. season. He's England's number two, probably. Fantastic Pushing goalkeeper. Pushing hard. Mm. You just don't need that conflict, do you? I agree. I agree completely. I think that you've got, yeah, Ramsdale obviously wanting to push for an England spot. Raya push for a Spain spot. As a fit, it will be a short-term fit. It has yeah. to be. And I think So it was that, a year's loan he signed, didn't he? Yeah, and then you just you obviously wonder what's going to happen thereafter. Um, you know, whether David Rea might be the longer term, yeah. you know, uh, number one, etc. But the the problem for me is that and I think I get and I've heard some of the points that people have made, like surely you just want the best players and two best players in all positions, fight it out, etc. It's different yeah. for goalkeepers. It's different because rather than playing with that idea that you're going to express yourself and you're just going to play your best game, you might just start to play thinking I can't make a mistake here. Play it safe. Yeah. If yeah. I make one mistake, he's going to swap me. And then you get that whole yo-yo goal. There's not once that a team has won the Premier League or won a major league where they've done yo-yo goalkeepers. It mm-hmm. just doesn't work. It's always been your settled number one, the number two. I go back to the situation, actually, me and, me and you, good example, where I got to the Premier League. I was your two. I was so happy to be your two. Yeah. Because I felt kind of almost lucky to be there, be in the Premier League. I got the old game when you had a couple of injuries or when you couldn't play against Man United. I wanted you to do well. I was supporting you. And yeah, you knew that even if you made an error or two, it was your spot. Yeah. That for me works. Because as long as you've got someone pushing you to an extent, like, and you're not the type, and, and most goalies aren't. Like Most goalies are driven. They want to do well. Not many are just going to like take their foot off the gas and be like, oh, I'm safe now. I'm the number one. You're still going to push yourself. So you don't really need someone that's like hot on your heels trying to do that I think there's a few at the moment like I see it obviously a bit of a strange one at Leeds with now Darlow going in there as a two obviously the Sam Johnson Dean Henderson I'm really interested to see how that one plays out I think all of these will end up being short term solutions and then they'll eventually choose their one. the other one will move we'll on, move on. Well, let's talk about again. Crystal Palace then because that's got David Raya Rambo written all over it hasn't it mm. with oh. Henderson and Sam Johnston yeah. like, what's what, what's, go, what's going to give there well, you either need someone 
it, a couple of things for me. You need someone to be happy to be a two. And if one of them is, great. Is Dean Henderson going to be happy to be a two? Let's be honest. This is the thing. No, so, he's not. So Definitely it, it, not. It, you know, it's quite simple with all these. It's the same with the number three. You need someone to be happy to be a three and happy to be a two. Now, if that doesn't exist, then it doesn't work as a goalkeeping department. So until that happens, then it will keep changing until you find that one, two, three. And then you'll get, go back to a city, go back to a Liverpool, where you get a really settled one, two, three. And at some point, it always changes. Liverpool will change because at some point, Kelleher's going to need to yeah, you go, know, and go and show what he can do because he's, you know, what he's played, he's been brilliant. But that's worked because, again, Kelleher's progressed. He's been happy to be the two to an extent. Then you get to a point where you're like, okay, I really need to kick on a bad Adrian, haven't you, as well as a three. Again, fits that role so that has to shift at some point and yeah i just think with a lot of these now there's i just think they're short-term solutions and whether it's january or end of the season i think we'll see changes again. i think like uh, i agree with you it's short term but also long term as well because i think in the back of the manager's minds they know who they want as their number one mm. So I think what they're doing is almost waiting for a goal. It's like take the Crystal Palace situation. It's almost like they'll be waiting for Sam Johnston to have a bad little run of games or them go on a little losing spree or something. It's like a perfect opportunity to go, right, Dean, come on. Because Dean, again, a proper goalkeeper. He deserves to be playing in the Premier League. Do you know what I mean? He should be playing in well, the Premier League. Let's pre talk about but, Sam Johnston. Though, but then, then Sam Johnston should be the same. <laughs> so, so, That's if, what I'm saying. But so if it, you're Sam Johnston, <laughs> if you're literally Sam Johnston and they go and spend... What, 20 million? Oh, it's horrible, mate. What are you thinking? Oh, it's horrible. Can I tell you a story? Edwin van der Sar told me this once. He said, um, he said, when I was at Juve, he said, um, he said, playing really well, doing great. He said, season finished. I think we won the league, whatever. He said, in the summer, the manager rings him and said, hi, Edwin, listen, um, uh, we're signing uh, Gigi Buffon for a world record fee of 40 million um, <laughs> wow. euros or whatever it is. He goes, but listen, he says, no decisions have been made. No decisions. <laughs> Honestly, no decisions have been made. We'll just get back in the summer and we'll fight it out and we'll see what's what. And Edwin was like, so you've just made, you're just signing a goalkeeper for a world <laughs> record fee, 40 million, and you're telling me that it's up in the air as to whether he'll play or not. Exactly. He was like, I just knew. He said, obviously, you just knew. And that's what it is, though. When you see a goalie coming through the door for 20 million quid like that, the writing's on the wall. It's horrible, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the, the one at the moment, and actually, so then there's always the transition. And normally then a manager will wait. And I'm, this is more from sort of playing experience. Like they'll wait for a defeat or a mistake or something and make the transition. We've seen it recently at Brighton where the yeah. Bruggen's gone in yeah. on the back of Jason still having a very good game and a win. Yeah. So I find that, uh, I found that strange because then you also, then you've got the dynamic of a goalie stepping in almost on the back foot because the other goalkeeper's done really well, they've just won the game. So you tend to find that even if the manager has an idea of they're going to be my number one, they'll just be quite delicate as to when they make that change so the goalkeeper can step in on the front foot. Thanks everybody for watching. We hope you enjoyed this clip of the Fozcast. If you would like to watch the full episode, it is now available exclusively on Spotify for free.